welcome to the review of the Mazda CX-60. Now, does this have enough to fight off the Chinese and enough to battle off the Germans? Well, you're gonna have to watch the full review to find out. Yep, so thanks for tuning in to another review and I'm pleased to let you know that this video is sponsored by Naked Insurance, which I'll talk about a little later. But for now, let's chat Mazda CX-60. So Mazda has always been renowned for building really, really good cars. From how they drive, to how they're built, to how they feel, the quality of the materials, etc. And this, without a doubt, is still up there with some of the best built Mazdas that I've driven. The build quality is great, the sound insulation is good, the materials used are top class. Um, there's not a lot to actually complain about this Mazda CX-60, but yes, Probably one of the first comments that's going to be under this video is the engine. But that's because it's powered by a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. Yeah, it's not turbocharged or anything like that. It puts out 141 kilowatts and 261 newton meters of torque. Now the CX-60 is a bigger car. So you do feel like the engine is having to perform a little bit extra harder than normal to lug around this bigger, heftier body. Um, but the thing that I always think in the back of my mind is this car is not built to be a sports car. It's not built to be a performance SUV. It's a family car. You're supposed to be driving in it on holidays, uh, back and forth from work, the school run and everything like that. And from that point of view, I think it's fine. Yes, you could do with a lot more power as could any car, but the way that the power is delivered through the eight speed gearbox, um, I think that it's okay guys. The car drives really nicely, it's comfortable, the power is not that bad. Um, like now I'm driving, I'm not having to throttle its neck to get any power out of it. It slowly climbs through the gears, it gets to the speed you need to get to. Yes, there's going to be times where you have to put your foot down to overtake or do something like that. But that's not all the time. And the time that you are driving this car, I don't think you're going to be that upset. And then let's talk trim levels and pricing. So I'm currently driving the entry level model in the CX-60 range. Um, it's called the Dynamic. Even though there's nothing really dynamic about it, but anyway. Um, and this sells from 740,000 Rand. And as you step up into the higher grades, like the individual, um, that's gonna then set you back about 845,000 Rand. And starting from about next month, there'll be a third option, which is the 3.3 liter uh, mild hybrid six cylinder diesel engine. Um, and that's going to be in the realm of about a million and fifty rand. But I do feel at this price point for this entry level car at 740,000 rand, you are going to feel a little bit shortchanged in terms of the specifications and options that are missing, right? And at this price point in other cars, you'd be getting a lot more of those things, okay? Like, as an example, you don't have adaptive cruise control. You've only got like standard cruise control that you set and the car just keeps going. Um, you don't have a full 360 camera system. You don't have that. You've got a rear camera with park sensors. Uh, you also don't have blind spot monitoring. You don't have any of the smart safety driving tech like lane keep assist and everything like that either. Um, you've got the standard sound system in here, even though Mazda's famous for having both sound systems. But in order to get all of this additional stuff, you have to then go up into the individual model where you're now going to be spending 845,000 Rand and you're going to start getting those sorts of features which you should be getting even from the entry level point of view. But then speaking of what comes standard in the individual model is those things I've mentioned. So you are going to have the 360 camera, the Bose sound system, um, the blind spot monitoring um, and all of those sorts of features. You are also going to be getting four wheel drive. So in the dynamic model you only get rear wheel drive but you will get the addition of two extra wheels driving you, which might just help with the acceleration and the car feeling a little bit more sportier. But at the end of the day, that's gonna add extra weight. So if you are worried about how the car's gonna, how the car's gonna perform, then I think you just need to take that into consideration. But coming back to what makes Mazda an awesome car, 
is the design, the build quality. It's something that they've never shied away from and something that they've owned. And maybe that's why they stick to the price points that they do. Um, so inside here, you've got soft touch materials everywhere. You've got an interior that's built solidly. Nothing rattles, nothing's moving around and shaking and squeaking. You sit comfortably in here. The seats are comfortable. You've got a full leather interior. You've got a leather wrapped steering wheel. You do have buttons on here to do some of the minimal stuff that you can on the dynamic model, but <laughs> that's it. And as I mentioned, you do have a infotainment chair in the front. It's a 10 inch on this dynamic and you get a 12 inch on the individual. But again, I don't know why, but it's not a touch screen. And everyone's gonna say, it becomes a touch screen at, slow, at slower speeds or while you're stopping. No, it's never a touch screen, never. Everything is also laid out simply. Like down in the center here, nothing's complicated. You've got your gear shifter, which is a little bit odd in terms of how you move and shift between drive and park. And it's like a little bit of a maze that I think you'll get used to if you own the car. And then this has happened to me before, so I thought I'd quickly show you. So the car is off, okay, you can see it's off. No RPMs or anything like that. But here, it shows you that that little orange light is on, which would tell me that the car's in park, right? But I can't start it. Because I have to put it into park. So that's why I say this is very confusing because now what it wants me to do is do that. And then the orange light is still on. So was I in park or wasn't I in park? Who knows? There are different drive modes. So there's a drive mode button over here too, which makes everything nice and red um, to make the car sporty, which I don't think it really does change anything, but I do love the way that the dials look. <laughs> Um, but yeah, going down here, it's also very practical. You've got some two cup holders that you can close up to also keep the minimalist look looking nice. Um, and as I said, also you've got your rotary dial and some buttons here to navigate through your infotainment, which is a little bit of a hack, I'm gonna be honest. Like if you're looking or working through um, the wireless Apple CarPlay, you've got to scroll this wheel through every single little icon that's there just to get to the bottom corner every time you've got to navigate through everything just to get to one little thing which is a bit of a faff and i'm not a big fan of that but speaking more about the practicality you do have a split armrest down here in the middle which you can see i've got a nice cloth and things like that too it's only about that deep um i would have liked that to be a lot deeper um but i don't know maybe they've just lost real estate or they don't have the abilities of Narnia to make this deeper than what it should be. Um, but yeah, I think the door bins are okay. They could be a lot bigger. They are quite small. I don't think you'll fit one of your big water bottles in here for road trips and things like that. But alas, it is still there. Down in the middle, you also have wireless phone charging. And that is standard on the entry level model too. And then taking a look above me, you have a really big panoramic sunroof. It does, or well, the whole blind does open but it was really bright outside this morning, so I didn't open it up the whole way. But it opens up the whole way, and you do have a section that opens up too, if you want to let in some additional light and some wind or whatever you need to. And then onto Naked Insurance and why I really, really like them. I'm going to show you a screen recording here to show how easy it is to apply for insurance online. It takes like between 90 seconds and two minutes. Literally, that is it. I actually do it every week for my videos anyway. Look, when you see the cost of ownership breakdown, that insurance line there, that's from Naked Insurance. And I do it through them because it takes that quickly because I'm constantly editing and all of that stuff. So trust me, when I say it's fast, it is fast. And another reason why I really like Naked Insurance is because you can actually pause your cover. Now you're going away on holiday for two weeks to the coast. You're taking the one family car, but the other one's now sitting in the garage collecting dust, but you're paying insurance for it. While at Naked, you can actually pause that cover and save like 50% on your premium that you can now put that money into your holiday to enjoy. And if you're worried about doing the quotes because you don't want someone to phone you back, you're just doing a little bit of research to see what your car's gonna cost you per month, then don't worry because at Naked Insurance, no one is going to phone you back. No one. No spam calls, no one's gonna bug you, no one's gonna phone you three times a day. That doesn't happen at Naked Insurance. If you get a quote, you get a quote. If you accept it, that's another story but you're not going to get spammed by insurance phone calls at Naked Insurance. Now, if you're interested in getting a quote from Naked Insurance, then please go and try the link down in my description 
and I promise you, it'll take you less than two minutes and no one is going to phone you back. And the back of the car is just as comfortable as the front of the car. Again, it's a full leather interior. The seats are soft, they're comfortable. You can easily do long road trips in this car from a front seat point of view and from the back, you'll be very comfortable. You do have USB slots up front here, um, as well as in the back for your passengers so they can charge their phones and they do have their own aircon too. And I think Mazda have absolutely killed the design of the CX-60 and killed in the sense of it's a good thing, they've knocked it out the park. Um, as I said, the bonnet is long, it's elongated, it's elegant. I love the way that they've kept things simple. So yes, there's a huge grill up front, but there's no other fancy, other black grills and canards and like any other weird vents and things like. It is what it is. It's a naturally aspirated engine. There's no need for intercoolers and additional grills and things like that. So yeah, they've kept it simple. The lines are beautiful. You can still see it's a Mazda. You can see it's in the CX family. And from the rear, it looks just as good. Um, you can see that there's this, the design cues from the front daytime running lights, like the shape of it, have carried through into the back lights too. And I love that they've kept the design consistent from the front to the back. And another cool thing that I love about the design of the car and how it looks is that no matter what variants or type of CX-60 you buy, it's going to have 20-inch wheels. Yeah. Badass, big 20-inch wheels that fill those wheel arches perfectly. And then speaking a little bit around the fuel consumption, um, I've been averaging about 10 liters per 100 Ks. I've been driving the car relatively nicely because I've been trying to get the fuel numbers lower. Um, I'm battling with it. I haven't got it much lower, but I think that's just because of the nature of the car, right? You do have to drive it a little bit harder to get the power out of it that you need. Um, I know that Mazda does claim, so I'm just having a look at it. They do claim fuel figures in the sevens. Um, which might be possible on the open road doing a road trip, but just driving it every day, I don't think you are going to get to those numbers, even though you are driving really, really nicely. Ooh. And that brings me on to the suspension. So yes, this is a family car. It's comfortable on the inside. Everything like that is perfect, but this suspension is a lot firmer than what it needs to be. So yeah, it handles the bumps nicely and whatever, but it just feels like it is sporty and it's not really a sporty car. Um, the speed humps and things that you go over do tend to jolt you more than what they should. Um, so maybe there's a tweak that they can do in the suspension somehow, but that's one of the things I don't really like about this car is how hard it is to drive it over bumps and things. And then looking at the boot space, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised there. I think the ratio of the car size to the boot space is perfect. Um, it's big enough for what you need for your full family and to go on holidays and stuff like that. Um, what else is cool is you can also operate um, the back seat. So if you do need to drop them to get heavier, heavier, to get bigger things into the back, you can do that without having to like walk around. There's little latches on the side there that you can actually drop all three seats, which is very, very convenient. And if you're in the market for a Mazda CX-60 or any other Mazda for that matter, go check one out on changecars.co.za. They're a website that sells new and used cars. And the benefits of them is that they actually approve every single dealership that sells cars on their website. So they vet out all of the dodgy ones that are gonna try to scam you and take you for a ride. That's not gonna happen with change cars. They also pride themselves on service guaranteed. So whatever dealership you end up using or car you end up buying, you'll know that the quality of service you get from start to finish is going to be of the highest. Their website is also a hub for everything automotive. So you can watch car reviews, you can read articles, you can even go there to see what you can afford. So you simply go to that option, you put in all of your financial details and they'll let you know exactly what you can afford per month and it also provides you with a few options of cars that they sell on the website to match your budget. And then onto the verdict in the form of the GDR test. Should you get the car, should you drive the car, or should you remove it from the list of cars that you're looking at? Now, for me, I would go and drive it. I think there's a lot of competition out there in this segment. There's a lot of Chinese cars that are offering much, much more value at a similar comfort level, but at a far, far cheaper price. But if you are a Mazda fan and you love what Mazda do, then go and drive this. Go and see if you're happy with the amount of spec that you're getting for the price. 
I know you're going to be comfortable and you're going to be happy with the build quality, but there's a lot more to buying a car these days than just that. People want value. But also, hold out for the new one that's coming out in March because I think that's going to be a game changer in terms of the performance it puts out and the amount of spec that you're going to get for that price. So wait for that too. So thanks for watching another Greg Dennis review. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Mazda CX-60 and I hope you learned a little bit more about it. If you did, please will you drop a like below and if you want to see more automotive content and other car reviews, then please subscribe. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.